Uh, man, I cannot believe that Peter didn't buy a 3D printer just to make one video. My gamer tag in several different video games is Ben Printer. I am the 3D printer. We're gonna make a new shell for this controller uh, completely out of wood. Now I know some of you are gonna be mad and probably leave comments saying, wow, I can't believe you didn't make the control panel and the button contact points out of wood too because believe it or not, I'm just using the insides of this controller. Yeah, sorry, I'm not magic. This is our donor for today's video and Oh, would you look at that? He's still connected to the console, how sad. <laughs> eh, <sighs> could just use this for the whole thing. I wanna be a little bit more precise. I do have sanding equipment. I've got a Dremel, that's gonna be critical. Uh, first step, we just gotta take this apart and then we will try to mimic it, but made out of wood. It'll obviously be a little bit bigger because this plastic's pretty thin. Uh, Cause you know, Nintendo's not morons. They choose to make their controllers out of things that don't require a centimeter of thickness to have any rigidity. I was looking on Etsy and I saw that they had like wood grain uh, pro controller cases and stuff and I thought it looked really cool. But then I caught myself, dude, you've been sober for like a, a week or so. Haven't bought anything expensive in... Uh... Well, I did get some car tail lights. Haven't bought anything expensive for a video in like a week. So I still want a wood grain controller. So I figured this will be a good way to do it. And then in the future, like if this goes well, anytime I have the urge to buy something, I can just make it out of wood instead. I don't know why these controllers have socks. I specifically bought this controller for this video because uh, the ones I had already, I really liked. And then I started using this one and started to really like it. Even though it's the same as every other pro controller, it just happened to become my favorite controller for a bit. Now it's gonna be even better because it'll give you slivers. Dremels were invented by a guy called Albert J. Dremel. Albert J. Dremel. I would make that up if someone asked me where the Dremel came from. That's what I'd say. Oh yeah, Albert J. Dremel, uh, obviously. And now that I am looking at this, I think it will also take several days. <sighs> step one. Think up what step one is. So we'll saw this in half. Oh, this is gonna be so much fun. This is gonna be the video where I cut my fingers off. It was either gonna be this one or, uh, or Weird Mobile Games 2. This, I cut all that. It was all me right there, by hand. I think I'm gonna be done uh, doing anything for a week. So we'll pick up on this video next week. All right, it's been one week. It's not a perfect cut, obviously. And from the looks of it, we will need to make it, mm, We will need to make it. Okay, I was right about that. Basically, we're just gonna make a quick sketch here, and then we're gonna carve out the inside of this piece. And then we're obviously gonna have to cut more uh, off, off this side and this side eventually, but <laughs> probably wanna make it pretty thick, because there's gonna be two different pieces here, the top and the bottom, and then also the, uh, the feet, which is really gross. I hate that part of my job today is uh, I have to make feet and I have to accommodate feet. I think that that really sucks. Got some nifty knives. See, there's a few scoopers, a little twang, some twangers and some bigger scoopers. We'll probably use the bigger scoopers. I have an entire vise. I'm gonna use this. Do something like this. Should probably apologize to all the wood carvers in the audience there. Probably doing a lot of things wrong here. This could possibly include apologizing to my grandpa, who's actually a woodworker. While I'm at it, should also probably apologize just to my family in general for making a controller out of wood. Somewhat disappointing, I, I know. Could have been a doctor. And for that matter, should probably apologize to everybody watching this video. Sorry about this. This would be a lot easier if this table wasn't made out of plastic. I put some weights on this table. It should maybe be a little better. It's a good thing I had uh, 
Good thing I found a magic balloon. Wood. Yeah, that's all I gotta say. There's a lot of hammering here. I don't have time to sit and tell stories. Y'all didn't think I could get this far, did ya? Listen, I just got a lot of really unique skills that I've gained from playing Sonic games over the years. A lot of people say, oh, you're gonna spend all your time indoors playing Sonic games, you're never gonna get any anywhere in the world. Look at me! I've been trying to tell people for years, if you play Sonic games, you're gonna develop a lot of skills, wood carving being one of them. Meanwhile, people who grew up playing Mario they're gonna know like what, how to type from teaches typing. Oh sure, uh-huh. How do you expect to learn to type if you didn't even learn the numbers on the keyboard or the letters? That's why Sonic Schoolhouse is actually the superior game to grow up with. Teaches typing. More like teaches nothing. I'm not a very good typist myself and look at me. I'm having a blast. And now it smells really good in my house too. So look at me now, Mario fans. Even though the times have changed and technology is popular, uh, maybe technology should go more in the way of making things with wood. Maybe Nintendo should start making their consoles out of wood. They've been trying to go the cardboard route, but cardboard's not old fashioned. That's a, that's a new thing. It's also somewhat of a dangerous realm to get into. I tried making things out of cardboard once. Twice, actually. The first one, created uh, everybody to ask me the same question over and over. Why am I covered in wood? That's crazy. It's getting pretty close. I think we can cut the legs off this thing. Man, these, uh, these controllers are kind of expensive. Yeah, me and Nick were talking the other day. And we... <laughs> When my channel first started, uh, it was actually based on the cartoon Sonic Boom. I would do reviews or YTPs or whatever, but pretty much all my content was based around Sonic Boom, because that was the first thing that actually kind of got views that I tried doing. And I really liked the show back in the day, or at least kind of said I did. But part of this culture around Sonic Boom when it first came out, because I was literally reviewing episodes as they were coming out, would be that it was kind of hated back in the day, like there was the designs and it's based after games that no one liked. And it was just this weird era of Sonic. And so everyone was talking about it in sort of a negative light. And me, like I had my own opinions, but, for, but I was kind of at that age too, where a lot of me reviewing the show was just like, this is stupid. I know about Sonic and I know what they should be and shouldn't be doing, because I know the characters. I made the characters, because I was a Sonic fan. And so a lot of my reviews are pretty negative. Looking back at the show for what my actual opinions are, I didn't, I really didn't like it. Like I, I would have some episodes that I said were good and some I said were bad. And there were some jokes I laughed at, but for the most part I didn't really like it. And I think it was because I was at this age where, for me being a Sonic fan, we were kind of in that Sonic depression where we, there wasn't really a lot of good content coming out. Maybe we still are in that depression, but it's, you know, I was very defensive about Sonic and the fandom and the games that I liked that no one else liked. And it was a kind of thing where I think I was almost offended by the cartoon because the show is very self-aware and it makes fun of Sonic fans and makes fun of Sonic and the characters. It, it's, it's almost a parody of Sonic. And it's very funny in that regard, but I think at the time I was kind of offended by it. Something deep down was like, I don't want to like this show because it's making fun of me and I was a very serious Sonic fan at the time. And it wasn't even that other people were making fun of the show, it was Sonic making fun of Sonic, so I don't know why I was offended by it. But like looking back, man, that show was actually pretty funny. Like I haven't seen season two yet and apparently it's way better, I've seen a lot of clips from it. But it was a pretty funny show. Interesting to think about though, just how much your opinions change. And I'm no less of a Sonic fan today than I was back then but just my opinion and probably toleration behind it has changed and I'm a little more self-aware about things. Oh, we're getting there. It's getting farther in. These edges need to be a little less edgy. That's another thing Sonic has taught me that Mario hasn't. You think Mario's gonna teach you how to be edgy? Is any edginess to Mario whatsoever? It's gonna teach you how to be a, just a happy person, more agreeing, complying with society's norms. Look at you. You Mario player. <clears throat> I love Mario, by the way. That might be good right there. Uh, that being said, the next step will be to cut off these edges. I don't have enough energy 
uh, in my entire life, I think, to do that. So at the time being, I have two options. I either cancel the video or I die. And neither of those are good. In fact, they're equally as bad. So I'm going to go to the store and get something that can cut this a little bit better than a handsaw. Wow, my arm... <coughs> oh, my arm does not hurt. I'm now the proud owner of a miter saw. Don't worry, I actually have other uses for it besides making a pro controller out of wood. Either way, we're progressing on this now. Um, I think I mostly got all the angles correctly. I'm gonna put my vise in place. And the next step would be, we have to cut out the individual holes for the buttons. Got my drill here. I got my bits here. That sounded kind of wrong. So this is what we have at the moment. This will be the front, this will be the inside. Now before we start shaving this down and making it look nice, uh, we should get the bottom half done, where basically we're gonna do the same thing. It's gonna be an indent that fits this piece. We're gonna have to cut these feet off and whatnot. You guys have seen me do it before. I don't think you need to watch me do it again. Now while doing this other piece, it took about three hours. And I had, you know, I had some pretty phenomenal thoughts and uh, a couple things that I said during that period. So it sure is a good thing that camera was going, because if my thoughts and, and <coughs> stories were not documented, that'd be s Oh, that'd be so sad. <coughs> but for this next one, there is sawdust in my throat. I'm just gonna roll this camera only. Maybe, uh, maybe if you're lucky, I'll say something witty uh, for a narration, but you guys can just watch a time lapse of me doing this one. <coughs> and if you, if you listen really close, you might just hear me make a, make a little blonde guy mistake. One of the classics, everyone's here for those. Maybe I'll pronounce a word wrong or... All right, that's it. So this time lapse is of probably like three hours of footage or something. And as it continues, you will notice every single object on this table besides the thing I'm working with slowly slide off and fall onto the floor. Which by the time I was done with this also was completely covered in sawdust and slivers and whatnot. I legitimately destroyed this entire room doing this video and it pains me just to rewatch it. So to focus on happier things, uh, this music is from Pretty Girls Mahjong, so uh, sorry, Delicious Pretty Girls Mahjong Solitaire, a Nintendo Switch game that I don't play as I am not particularly interested in either Mahjong or anime or pretty girls, yuck. But I'm gonna be honest, the soundtrack, it, it absolutely slaps. And I should note this game actually has absolutely nothing, zero, absolutely nothing to do with candy or deliciousness. It's it's just Mahjong with anime chicks. And they're actually coming out with a, uh, a poker one as well on the Switch, so, you know. I hope you didn't need that space in your brain for anything else. Just uh, take this useless information. Uh, that should be the hard part done with. I had to saw this by hand. If I sound tired, Oh, it's because I took some night quilts. Because I was sawing at this for an hour. So this is the bottom part now. We've got it a little bit slanted. Obviously, it's going to be very, very sanded down and finished on the bottom and, and same for the top. But here's the exciting part. Here's the inside of the controller. You put this together. This is all that we're really going to need. There's going to be rumbles here. We'll put those wherever. There's going to be triggers, right? But for the most part, this will just fit in here. And this fits over top of it. Perfectly. So this is this is the controller. Now, granted, it's gonna look a lot different. We're gonna sand it down a lot more. We're gonna shave it down to the smallest possible size. Well, it's retaining rigidity. So at least now, now that we've got the main casing done, we can do the fun stuff. We are gonna put little legs on it, like this, like a real controller. All right, there we go. I hope it's known. Like I, I hope that it's just assumed. I know this isn't how a vice works, right? Like nobody thinks I'm using it this way because I think that's actually how a vice is supposed to work. And I need to apologize for what I'm about to say, but I actually uh, took apart a pro controller very recently and gave it some pizzazz and I didn't record it as a video. And I know people are going to be very confused and upset that I did something in my life that wasn't a video and I, I apologize. I know there's going to be some people that are mad that I'm not using wooden screws. I mean, that's a, that's a bit unreasonable, don't you think? All right, we're going to go to another time lapse here of me cutting out spots for the, the triggers, spots for the control sticks, cut out a better D-pad area, because I need to put on glasses and a mask right now, or I'm going to develop both 
asthma and blindness. Alright, so this is me doing the more wood stuff. Only exciting thing that happened here is I put the drill bit straight through part of my thumb. It's not that bad, but I did put on a big bandage for a minute. Just didn't want to get sawdust in it. Think about infections. Whenever you get cut, you know, it's an important thing. You know, I've never actually eaten frog legs. Welcome to day three, this is the basement. I am going to be working here for a moment. The main reason being that uh, this is footage of what it looks like upstairs. I don't wanna walk on that anymore. It makes my socks look like a pine cone. And I'd rather stand up anyway because I am in immense pain. But I'll show you what we did here. Of course we've got the, the base controller, but then I've also got the controller legs. These are all the buttons, control sticks, I made the D-pad and everything. And basically what we're gonna do now is just attach most of this together, sand it all down, carve this to look like, to look like an actual controller and not a Minecraft character. And this will be another narrated time-lapse section. Mainly, you can't hear me especially well, even though I'm saying full sending kitchen, so stories wouldn't be that interesting. All right, that's me grinding a controller for a bit. I don't have... <laughs> Probably should have worded that differently. Kind of boring. So over here, uh, so over here, I actually bought this Diva Hot Wheel recently. I thought it was really freaking cool. Oh, they actually have a Tom and Jerry one. <laughs> it's a car. It's a mouse. It's just so weird. Like this is the most childish Hot Wheel I've ever seen. I used to collect Hot Wheels as a kid, and now uh, as a 24-year-old, this is the, uh, this is the only Hot Wheel I'm tempted to get. They've got one that is a Baby Yoda. Why would they do this? What? Why would they do this? There's a shaggy one. Is it actually, does it have his face on it? It's literally his head, but a Hot Wheel. All right. This whole room is covered in dust and wood and sawdust. My basement in its entirety is covered in wood and sawdust and scrap. But we've reached a point where all that's left to do is assemble and then we'll get to test this thing. For the most part, I think I've done a lot of things well, and by well I mean just in a way that won't anger people. I got these two nice rustic screws here. This is how you open the case. It looks kind of like a like an old Mad Cat's GameCube controller. Something real fat that people generally don't want to play with, but it's made out of wood, so that'll give people incentive enough to want to play with it. <laughs> Tell you what, through all of this, carving this controller over the course of three days, I have a newfound respect for the people who actually make pro controllers. I mean, look how precise the lines and the circles are. Whoever did this has some really precise hands, and I, I gotta applaud them. I mean, this is the best I could come up with. To be honest, we should probably let this thing set in place with the glue. So we'll pick up on this in a few hours. How long does this take to try? Okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow? You'll notice I cleaned up the room. It's nice. I appreciate the fact that it's clean. I personally enjoy this fact. I cannot do the triggers and the bumpers yet today. We'll have to wait till tomorrow. tomorrow. All right, it is the next day. Got the triggers on already. Everything should be dry. It's been quite a bit of time. It's all holding in place, clearly. I have yet to push a single button on this thing, and I'm afraid that once I do, it might break into a million pieces. So, it's gonna go through first. Control stick. Nice. Can push it down. D-pad, not too worried about that. Other control stick, definitely gonna bump the Y and B buttons, but that is fine. All right, face buttons are what I'm scared about. Wow. I mean, that's, that's mostly fine, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna test it. This was the pre-test test. This is the test test for the test, testing it for the test so that it didn't break during the test, like the pre-test. We move now. All right, we're testing this with literally the, the game that destroys actual controllers, so. I'm gonna have to be kind of gentle here, but come on. <laughs> What am I gonna play, Mario Party? Tech it? Oh. Ah, I'm the best! Dude, this works. I have I a Switch use... made for kings and a pro controller made for squirrels. Yeah, I forgot to, I forgot to start my video recording. 
Yeah, all right, we're going back into it. Son of a gun. I have to have proof of my victory. All right, so I guess for context, I lost a game, which was kind of close, but I was against a villager who was really, he just comboed me and I lost because and I couldn't really test the controller either because the game, whoever made the game, a freaking Sakurai decided, you know, we make a game where if you're very good, the other person doesn't get to play the game. And so you uh, simply have to sit there and be comboed. Very fun, very good mechanic. I can't up tilt. Good thing I t Look at this movement for someone on a wooden controller. Oh, good job, bud. You did it. Oh, good job, bud. Couldn't see that coming, considering you charge it a week before you're gonna hit it. Wow, good job. Who do you think I am? Playing on a wooden controller. Oh, it's a last stock scenario. Will I beat the five, the five-year-old on Super Smash Brothers Online who plays Kirby? Go high. You fool! Game? Nothing hit me! This game's dog water! Please die. Go high. Yeah, you don't say. Really? Land in a dash attack? No. Oh. Alright, I'm gonna say the thing I said uh, before, but there was no game footage, so no one cares. That I have a Switch made for kings, and a Pro Controller made for squirrels. I'm getting out of here.